Art patrons look on as the finishing touches are added to Lombard Street, San Francisco. The picture is more than just a wall decoration. For the Johnsons, it's their entry ticket to the gentle, idyllic realm of Thomas Kincaid. He's one of the most collected artists in the world and an American business phenomenon. Although Kincaid's pictures hang in one in every 20 American homes, contemporary art critics dismiss the work as kitsch. But critics can't fault his success at mass appeal marketing. Hello everyone, I'm Thomas Kincaid, the painter of light. I'm so excited to have a chance to share a message of hope with people all over who might need that extra reminder of the security and comfort and peace that we enjoy here in this country. My painting, Hometown Pride, celebrates the pride of little communities all over America, communities where flag and home still mean something. Kincaid believes flags and cozy homes are what Americans want to see now more than ever. He's clearly onto something. Income from his painting last year was more than $150 million. Kincaid is the only artist whose company is listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Yet his work can't be seen in any museum, but in the shopping malls, right across America and now in Europe. Kincaid is America's most collected living painter, and for those who can't afford the real thing, there are jigsaws, wallpaper, calendars and greeting cards, all with the same wholesome themes. It took time for the cottage to get well worn into the ground, and here's a swing and maybe children come back and visit their parents, and this swing takes them back to the time. Oh, how interesting. So it's very, I mean, I look at it and I see magic, and um, it's just something that I would like to create my own home into. But as you're talking, there's more to it even than that. Does he ever have the stories with the pictures? Thomas Kincaid is the most collected artist in the whole world. And, um, you know, looking at his images, you'll, you know why. They're, they're gorgeous. He's wonderful with luminism. When the lights go down or the sun goes down on his paintings, his um, cottages or his sunsets just light right up. And it's all through a technique called luminism where he layers his paint from dark to light. And it's within those layers of paint that the light reflects off of it. A lot of people think it's fluorescent paint. It's not. It's a total technique, and he's mastered it wonderfully. He's an excellent artist that brings peace and serenity to many, many people. In this Kincaid Gallery in California, as in 349 others nationwide, there are no actual paintings for sale. The artwork is mass-produced. A digital image is made from a Kincaid original and reprinted onto stretched canvas 4,000 times. As each edition sells out, the older prints become more valuable, and some of the earlier work now goes for more than $40,000, and the public is hungry for more. Any town can have pride in the community, so we're going to release a different print edition for each community. My goal when I painted this is this could be anywhere. This could be anyone's hometown. So we're going to release it as a, a community edition, a hometown edition for each community that participates throughout this country. What a way to build unity. Isn't that cool? People all over this country can feel like, hey, that's my hometown. This is a way to build unity, to remind people that no matter what differences we have, all communities share the same heartbeat. Small towns are really the heart of America. I mean, that's where the American dream is still alive. People who work hard, who believe in their community, and are good neighbors. The painter of light makes serious art critics cringe. He appeals to a kind of a, uh, a viewer who doesn't really have that much interest in the general spectrum of contemporary art. I mean, it's sort of warm and fuzzy imagery that's, it's sort of like the equivalent of a teddy bear in the form of a picture. It's like, you know, these the, the sweet little cottages and gazebos, and if you turn down the lights, apparently, in the painting, you know, the, the windows glow. So it has that kind of literal glow, which supposedly is, translates into a spiritual glow. And, you know, and he markets himself in that way. Um, if, 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 you know, there's a kind of a, um, you know, a genius in the work. It's not, it's not in the art itself, but in the marketing of the work. Junk or not, other artists like Lynn Butner have learned something from Kincaid, the master marketeer. Some of Lynn's paintings in this San Diego gallery sell for $10,000, 
that prints can be had for a fraction of the price. I guess I chose early when I was born that I was going to be an artist. Um, I felt like that it, that it was chosen for me and that I was just um, living out that sort of prophecy of, of doing it. It's been described as zen-like because what I do is I let go of all conscious thoughts when I'm doing these paintings and these images just appear magically uh, from the intense knowledge that I already have in technique and how to get those images out uh, in a way that people can actually see. I spent a lot of money in art school. I went to the best art schools and all throughout those schools they never mentioned anything about marketing. They were more concerned about learning technique and the process of doing art. By emulating King Cage, she's chosen to focus not just on the exclusive end of the market, but on making her art affordable to just about everybody. If there's somebody out there that can only afford a dollar greeting card and they want to frame it, I say, why not? You know, uh, I don't want to cut my art off to, to people. I want to make that available in a way that everybody can afford, somehow or another. Back at the mall, a special King Cade event to boost sales. Chrissy Peterson is a master highlighter, trained at Kincaid HQ in Morgan Hills, California, to put dabs of paint onto the printed canvas. It's a technique Kincaid believes makes the picture more lifelike. But economic woes have hit the global art market and the Kincaid empire has not been spared. Share prices, which soared to $25 back in 1998, are now trading at under $2. Experts say Kincaid's brand of sweetness and light may have so peaked, despite interested gallery visitors. And if you look in the middle, in the cloud formation, there's two eyes, a nose, and a mouth right here. Two eyes, a nose, and a oh mouth. Oh, my God. Old man winter blowing cold air over the scene. Oh, my God. And there's some ghost riders on horses in there, too. Oh, I see. Uh, I don't know that, you know, if those galleries were to evaporate into thin air, I don't know what would happen to the value of a Kincaid. For Judy, Mary Beth and Ray Johnson, it would be nice if their masterpiece appreciates over time, but that's not their motivation to buy. I don't see us ever selling them. No, they're, they're the what we want to be passed on, if anything. Is Thomas Kincaid the greatest living artist or the greatest living mass producer of American kitsch? Kincaid's work treads a fine line between the two. Like it or not, He's sure to be remembered for generations to come.